Hello and welcome to Game Master 1379 Animator's Guide to Unique Animations in Engine. This tutorial will teach you how to put an animation in Engine without having to overwrite another animation. Now you're probably asking yourself, why do this? Using this method, you can easily add new animations in game without having to overwrite existing ones. This is helpful because it allows you to test multiple animations at the same time and also allows you to easily add animations with different links. In this tutorial, I will be adding a new animation for Spy. To start off, you'll need to extract the Spy's model from the game materials. To do this, go to GCFscape, go to File, Open, find Team Fortress 2 Materials.GCF, go to the TF folder, Models, Player, and find the class you're looking for. So extract this to your desktop or wherever you want. But in the end, you'll need to open up your um, Steam, Steam Apps, your ID, Team Fortress 2 TF folder, and look for Models, Player, and place it in here. If you don't have those folders, go ahead and create them. Now, once you've done that, you'll need to right-click and open your model in hex header. XVI32 is what I personally use. You can use whatever. doesn't really matter. And now you need to search for the text string spyanimations.mdl. Once you do that, you'll find it in this area over here, and you'll need to rename this spyanimations.mdl to something else. Doesn't really matter what it is as long as you can remember what it is and can easily remember it for later use. Now, personally, I'm going to use spyanims0 underscore ITM. This is what I use for my current taunt modification. It doesn't have to be that complicated as long as the same length. If you really wanted to, you could just change the I in animations to a 1. Leave it at that. Now that you've done that, go ahead and close it and you are ready for the next step. Now that we have our spy model hex, the next thing we need to look for is our animation. Mine's right here under the name tauntknife.smd. Now that I have that, I need to go find my uh, Define Bones file for my class. Where I can find that at is under Steam, Steam Apps, My ID. It'll be under Source SD Source SDK Content. Now this folder won't exist if you haven't installed Source SDK and run it at least once. If you have, you're good to go. Go into that, TF, Model SRC, Player, your class, Scripts, and your class is definebones.qci paste it to the same folder as your animation and next we'll need a qc file now you really can't memorize most of the contents of this so I'll just post the contents in the description you can work from there now the first thing you need to look at is right here this is spy anims0 underscore itm this is what I hex my spy animations to earlier in my spy.mdl file. You need to make this whatever you hexed yours to. This will stay the same because that's spy defined bones just like there. Uh, right here if you have a different class this is something you might want to change to uh, engineer, soldier, whatever you're working with. So I'll say spy. Same goes for that here. Now down here in your two sequence files there are two things you need to look at. Right here is the name of your animation. This will be tauntknife.smd to match this. Now this right here, start this one out with layer, but you can name this whatever you want. I can name this layer spy knife taunt 03 or underscore game master 1379. Doesn't really matter, it's just how it shows up in the source engine. Now to be consistent, whatever you name this right here, you need to name this down here along with it. And when you do that, the next thing you need to look at are these two entries right here. This tells you how long this, uh, this entry right here is. Now this is 150 frames, so that's what I've set it to. And down here, you'll see that I have this, the layer spy knife taunt. That needs to be whatever this is up here. And down here are four files that are four entries that tell you to blend with this one. I'm not really sure why Valve does this, it's just how they've done it, and it apparently just makes the blending a little bit more seamless. Now what this is, is the starting frame of the intro blend, the ending frame of the intro blend, the starting frame of the outro blend, and the ending frame of the outro blend. Normally I'd make these between 4 and 5 each, 
See, I start this at 0 and 5. I just want to leave this and this. I'd make it the last 4 or 5 frames of your animation. Because mine's 150 in length. I'd make that to 145 to 149. If yours is shorter, say it's only 130, make it 125 to 130. Now you're ready to go ahead and compile it. All right, now our QC is ready for compiling. You can compile this in GUI, Studio, MDL, or whatever your preferred uh, QC compiler is. I'm going to go ahead and compile mine in Notepad++. Let's go ahead and compile it. Once you've done that, go into Source SDK. Model Viewer. Go to File, Load Model, Find Player, Spy.mdl, go to Sequence, and fi find your animation. Mine is Spy Knife Taunt, and as you can see, it's playing just fine. Alright, our next step is to work in Face Poser, but before we do that, what we need to do is extract all these scene files for Team Fortress 2 into our TF folder. What we'll first do is go to GCFscape, File, Open, or Recent Files, Team Fortress 2 Content.gcf, TF, go to Scenes, Player, and you'll see these nine class folders right here. What you'll do is create a Scenes folder in your Team Fortress 2 folder. Go to player, create a player folder, and then extract these nine folders into your player folder over here. Now I'm not going to actually do this since there's a lot of files and it's going to lag me when I'm recording. Now once we've done that, we're going to go into face poser. Now that face poser is loaded, we need to go ahead and load our player model. We'll go to load model. player and then find spy.mdl now since mine's already loaded nothing's really going to change next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go to choreography load and then we'll end up in the scenes folder go to player go to spy and you're going to go to low and then you're going to scroll down until you find taunts now there's going to be several taunts here. I have more than usual since some of these are custom created. Now then, what I'm going to do is go ahead and load taunt 03v1. Now, normally you would create a new VCD file when creating a new taunt. However, since I'm not going to go too in depth into face poser since there's several tutorials about it and there's a lot to go over, we're just going to modify an existing taunt to use a new animation. Now then, as you can see, if we play this taunt... I'm going to gut you like a Cornish game head. Right now. But we want to use our custom one. So what we're going to do, we're going to right-click on Taunt 03 V1, edit the event, find our new animation, Spy Knife Taunt, rename it something new, Spy Knife Taunt, and as you can see, the animation... I'm going to gut you one. like a Cornish game head. However, I want to change a little bit of the facial expressions going on during the taunt. I'm going to you gut see, you like a, a Cornish early, game so head. I'll go ahead and change them to be a few seconds later and change the expressions accordingly. I'm going to gut you like a Cornish game head. You can change these to whatever you want. You can also go ahead and edit these events to have different, uh, be different facial expressions. I think you have to do it uh, over here. Just drag different ones and see which ones you like or don't like. This is M, which is it looks like a scowl. You don't really have to do anything like that. You can just leave it as is. Anyways, now that we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and save this new one. And we're going to name this Taunt Spy Knife Taunt. And that will save that as a VCD. And now that we have that, we need to go to File and Rebuild Scenes.Image. Scenes.image contains all the VCD files in the game and makes it so it caches them so the game knows what it has. You'll have to do this every single time you build a new choreography file. And every time Valve updates and adds a new VCD of their own, you'll have to extract that, put it into your folder, and also rebuild your scenes.image file. We only have one more step left before we're ready to launch TF2.
what we'll need to do now is reopen GCF scape once again go to open go to Team Fortress 2 content scripts talker and we'll need to select response rules and tf.txt now we're going to extract them to our Team Fortress 2 tf scripts talker folder and we'll extract them here and when we do we'll want to open response rules and scroll down to where we start seeing some criterion entries doesn't matter exactly where you enter it a general region would be fine and for this spy taunt we're going to go ahead and replace the your returnal reward so we're going to add an entry for it criterion weapon is yer item name your eternal reward required weight 10. Now in this here we need to have criterion and then you can make this whatever you really want it to be. It doesn't have to be YR, could have been your eternal reward, could have been anything you really want. Doesn't matter what you name this just as long as you remember it. And then here you can specify either um, item name or player weapon like if this were a CTX file you could just do like shotgun.ctx that would specify all the shotguns for that criterion but for this one we want to do the your eternal reward only so we're going to use item name your eternal reward with that once you're done go to file and save and then you're going to go and close response rules and open up tf.txt now when we do that we're going to look at it right here and we're going to go find spy. Now we can see where we can see several responses specifying different scenes. And we're going to go ahead and add one of those too. So what we're going to do is hit space and type response spy taunt yer and then do an opening bracket space tab scene scenes player spy low taunt spy knife taunt dot vcd this needs to match what you named your uh, vcd or vcds if you want to use more than one once we've done that we'll need to hit enter and add into closing bracket and now one more thing we need to do is add a rule file for this what we're going to do is scroll down and go down to let's see right here under sharp dresser we're going to type rule and then spy taunt yer what we'll do is put another bracket criteria concept player taunt is spy weapon is YR. Now the weapon is YR is a criteria you custom made in the response rules earlier. The is spy is an already existent criteria that says that the player is a spy and then this is just saying that it's a player taunt. Now we've done that, hit enter, type response and what we want to do is name our response what we named up here which is spy taunt YR. And what we'll do is go ahead and do that by adding response spy taunt yr and we're done now we need to launch team fortress 2 to see if all the work we've done has paid off <laughs>